Welcome to part two of Passover and Leaven. In part one, we did a basic introduction of the Passover of Egypt as recorded in the book of Exodus and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And now we're going to take that and show where leaven is likened unto doctrine in the New Testament. Now, in the Old Testament, the Passover, it was fulfilled in Christ. It was a foreshadow of what Christ would do on the cross. And I showed that, you know, in verse, uh, in part one. So just as a quick, let's take a look at Exodus chapter 12 and verse 15. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Unleavened means, you know, without yeast. Basically like a cracker. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put, a, put away leaven out of your houses. So, you know, take the yeast and, uh, and, and leaven was always likened unto sin. So you were to take sin and get it out of your life. You know, taking the leaven out of your house was symbolic of taking an inventory of what is in your life. You know, go through the house, take all the leaven and throw it out. Well, that's what we're supposed to do. Take a reflection upon our lives and get all the sin out of our lives. Well, let's take a look at something. Let you know a little secret. God still hates sin. Let's take a look at Revelation 18 and verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Twice. Physical Babylon fell, and when the Lord returns, spiritual Babylon will fall. It'll be destroyed. Because physical Babylon doesn't exist anymore. Babylon the Great is fallen, is fall, and is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful word. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Spiritual fornication, right? And the kings of the earth have committed, committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works, in the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Isn't that interesting? Let's take a look at Isaiah chapter 47 real quick. Because this ties into Mystery Babylon. Isaiah chapter 47, and uh, the, the book of Isaiah is probably the most quoted book in the New Testament. 47 and verse 1, Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Take millstones and grind meal, uncover thy locks, Make bare the leg, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. 
I will take vengeance and will not meet thee as a man. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. And that's Christ, people. Sit thou silent and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. The Lady of Kingdoms. Remember the, uh, the whore of Babylon, right? I was wroth with my people. I have polluted mine inheritance and given them into thine hand. Isn't that what happened when, when God gave Israel into the hand of the uh, Babylonians and they went to the Babylonian captivity? And if you want to read about that, read the book of Daniel. Okay? I was wroth with my people. I have polluted mine inheritance, inheritance and given them into thine hand. Thou didst show them no mercy. Upon the ancient thou hast, hast thou very heavily laid thy yoke. And thou say, sayest, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, neither didst remember the latter end of it. Therefore hear now this, thou that art given to pleasure, that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me, I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. Isn't this the, the, the same language in Revelation 18? I am and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. But these two things shall come upon thee in a moment in one day. The loss of children and widowhood, they shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries, for the multitude of thy sorceries, and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. For thou hast trusted in them in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, None seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Stand now with thine enchantments, and the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so, be, the, uh, if so, be thou shalt be able to profit, if so, be thou mayest prevail. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit before it. Thus, thus shall they be unto thee with whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants from thy youth. They shall wander every one to his quarter. None shall save thee. Merchants, people. Merchants. Right? Back to Revelation 18, verse 7. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death, and mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. Isn't this language exactly like Isaiah 47? Very, very similar. And she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for no man buyeth her merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen 
and purple and silk and scarlet and all thy thyin thyin t h y i n e thyin wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and the souls of men now you know what's interesting is people will tell you that this is the Vatican and Rome and that's I would say yeah a lot of that is fulfilled with Rome but when you read all these things guess what before there was Rome all these things were used in the worship in the temple the same colors the same cinnamon and odors and frankincense and wine and oil all these things the cakes the wheat the beast the sheep all these things were used in the uh, temple worship in the levitical priesthood think about it so i kind of i'm of the opinion that rome uh by adopting these things is kind of a smoke screen and the great city everybody will tell you it's rome but you know i've got a study who is mystery babylon and the bible tells you mystery babylon killed the prophets well jesus tells you where the, the prophets died they didn't die in rome where did the prophets of god die where they were sent to go to to preach and that was jerusalem people let's take a look at that real quick well i tell you what let's keep reading uh, let's see All right, we'll keep reading uh, Revelation. Revelation 13. And slaves and the souls of men, and the fruits that thou soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors, and as many as trade by sea, stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. Do you, did you catch that? Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. We're supposed to rejoice when God destroys Babylon. Verse 21. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that, that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatever craft, craft he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Isn't that what we read in Isaiah 47? They're sorceries. Sorcery is witchcraft, people. Satanism. Kabbalah. K-A-B-B-A-L-A-H. Look it up. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Verse 24. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. 
Well, let's take a look. So if Babylon killed the prophets and was responsible for the blood, well, let's take a look at Re uh, Luke 13.33, Jesus speaking. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Rome? No. For it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Hmm. Matthew 23, 37, Jesus speaking. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chicken under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Hmm, very interesting. Revelation 11, 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Was your Lord crucified in Rome? I don't know about you, but Jesus wasn't crucified in Rome. My, my Jesus was crucified in Jerusalem. Matter of fact, let's take a look uh, you know, it, it's it says that you know, Mystery Babylon was responsible for the you know the blood of all those on the earth, right? Didn't we just read that? Didn't we just read that? Yeah, we did. Revelation eighteen twenty four, and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Okay, well, let's have Jesus in Matthew 23, starting verse 34, explain what this means. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye shall scourge in your Roman Catholic churches? No. No. And some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. Who hangs out in the synagogues? Hmm. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel. Whoa, that's going back, huh? From the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barchias, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chicken under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Now, the only time I can see something where leaven is might be construed to be something good is in Matthew 13 and verse 33. Another parable spake he unto them, Jesus speaking, The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. So, I don't know. That's kind of iffy. But uh, let's take a look at something. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16. Okay? Now, in Matthew 16, Jesus had a few things to say. And let's go check it out. All right. Uh, let's see. Verse 1. Matthew 16 and verse 1. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Now, what's a Pharisee? Well, Mark chapter 7 and verse 3 tells you, For the Pharisees and all the Jews, so obviously Pharisees are Jews, For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. 
Now, uh, people, I'm going to read from Acts 23 and verse 6. It tells you about the, the beliefs of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Sadducees were Jews, but they didn't have the exact same beliefs as the Pharisees. Now, for those of you that don't believe Paul was an apostle, you have to understand something. You're basically saying the book of Acts is wrong. Because the book of Acts records the conversion of Paul. You basically deny all of Paul's writings. And also 2 Peter. So you're basically, your New Testament consists of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the book of James, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, Jude, and Revelation. And that's it. That's your, that's your New Testament. Paul spoke of the man of sin, the son of perdition, a lot. Gave a lot of warnings about the end times. And that's why they want to get rid of Paul. Oh, and you're also, those that deny Paul, are also admitting that the Holy Spirit neglected to warn the apostles that Paul was a false apostle. And if you want to charge God with failing to warn the apostles, you go ahead. Because Peter, in the book of Acts and in 2 Peter, calls you know Paul a brother in the faith. So, when you deny Paul, you're basically denying half the, bio, uh, half the New Testament. All right, so let's go to Acts 23, verse 6. But when Paul perceived that one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, so here is Paul's having an argument with the Jews, and part of them are Sadducees, part of them are Pharisees, but they're all Jews. Uh, you know, just because, you know, Baptists and the Pentecostals, they don't agree with each other on certain doctrinal points, but, you know. But when Paul perceived that one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, of the hope and resurrection of the dead, I am called in question. And when he had so said, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. You see, the Sadducees only believe in the, the five books of Moses, Matthew, I mean, sorry, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. They don't believe in angels. And they don't believe in the resurrection. And they don't accept the rest of the Bible. But yet they considered themselves Jews. But the Pharisees believed in a resurrection. They believe in angels. So... So that tells you the name of that tune, okay? Pharisees and Sadducees were both just different denominations of Jews. All right, let's go. Uh, now, for those of you that don't know it, I'm, I'm starting up my new uh, website because YouTube's going to boot me off. It's only a matter of time. So, But i got to get somebody to help me design a website. And I, I want somebody local that I can sit down with and show me how to uh, post stuff on a daily basis. I don't want to have to pay a webmaster because uh, I know a lot of people that have lost their websites to webmasters when the webmasters have held their websites hostage or stolen them. You know, so I want to be in control. I don't want to have to give somebody my password. No. I want them to show me how to do it at my house or at their office. So, you know, keep an eye out. If YouTube boots me off the air, um, I mean, I'm not going to get rid of my channel. I'm not going to do it. But when the time comes, I'm going to have a backup channel, uh, a website. All right, so let's go back to Mark, chapter 7, verse 3. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be which they have received to hold, as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels, and of tables. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Jesus, they asked Jesus, 
Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashen hands? He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah, Isaiah, well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites. As it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. He called them hypocrites. Verse 8. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Hmm. Okay, let's go back to Matthew chapter 16. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites! Isn't that what Jesus just said to the uh, Pharisees? Said they were hypocrites? O ye hypocrites! Ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall be no sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. They didn't have any food with them. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. So Jesus said, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. So what did the disciples do? Well, verse 7. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. And when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not, do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand and how many baskets ye took up? Remember when Jesus took the loaves of bread and he fed thousands of people and he did it twice, at least twice. You know, and then they took up baskets of bread. I mean, you know, Jesus could take one piece of bread and feed thousands, right? How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread. Don't beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. So when he says beware the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he's talking about the doctrine. Then understood they how that, that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. All right, let's take a look at the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 1. In the meantime, when they were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trode one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Okay? The leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. And for those of you that hate Paul, well, you can end, end, it, uh, end this Bible study now, because I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. 
Now, I don't think, uh, he didn't say mother, so I'm thinking this is probably a step stepmom. And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already as though I were present concerning him that hath so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such and one unto Satan, to deliver such as and one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened, for even Christ, our Passover, is sacrifi sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. How can people read this and, and, and think Paul is a false apostle? I, I just don't get it. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world or with the covetousness, covetous or extortioners, let's see, or extortioners or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. Verse 11. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an adulterer or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such an one, no, not to eat. And I'm guilty of this too. Uh, verse 12. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without, God judgeth. Therefore put away from among you yourselves that wicked person. So we're told in verse 6, Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover, for even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not Easter, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Well, people, I think I should uh, close this out now, because I hope you get the idea. You know, Christ is our Passover, and we should be unleavened for as much as possible. So, all right, well, this is the end of part two. This is the end of the Passover and the Leaven series. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, and John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. The Lamb of God taketh away the sins of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.